The news also reaches the British and General Howe. The unfortunate and untimely defeat at Trenton has thrown us farther back from the great encouragement it has given to the rebels. Howe orders General Cornwallis to return to New Jersey with 8,000 men. Meanwhile, Washington convenes a war council with his top aides. They decide to cross the Delaware again to take full advantage of the British confusion. Ten miles up the road, thousands of British and Hessian troops are gathering in Princeton, preparing to march to Trenton. Washington positions some of his men halfway between Trenton and Princeton. Their assignment is to delay the inevitable British advance. Back in Trenton, Washington's forces are ready. January 2nd, 1777. The rebels' newfound confidence is about to be tested. General Cornwallis and a massive force are marching toward Trenton, eager for an all-out battle. Along the way, Americans engage the British in a series of skirmishes, delaying their advance. The delays are costly to the British, who finally reach Trenton at sundown. Washington and his troops have taken positions on the south side of the Assunpink Creek. This is the Second Battle of Trenton. Three times the British attack the Assunpink Creek Bridge. Three times they are repelled, taking heavy casualties. One American soldier later described the carnage. Their dead bodies lay thicker and closer together than I ever beheld sheaves of wheat lying in a field which the reapers had just passed. As darkness falls, the Americans are encamped on one side of the creek, the British on the other. The Redcoats expect to easily defeat Washington the next morning. 